Find the best people you want to get close to. Find them. Get close to them. Do whatever it takes to learn everything you can from them. Because when you do, you're going to be a lot better off. I want to see other people win. We're so focused on ourselves in the beginning that we forget about other people. But to build an empire, you can't do it with one person. Welcome back, everybody. BC here with another special guest episode with Mike Wolf. You guys know him now. He's a familiar face. Welcome back, Mike. How's it going? It's been so hey, long. Hey, good to see you. I know. No kidding. Good to see you. I, th- I think I see you more during COVID than I ever saw you back in the, in the good old days. <laughs> I know, right? Crazy. Well, you know, we wanted to link up again and, and give you guys another episode. I've made videos in the past about the tax deeds. Obviously, Mike is an expert at that. Uh, my first experience purchasing uh, investment properties for myself was through the tax deeds. And I learned going to uh, Mike's tour, and I believe that was back in 2015. So it's been you know, quite some time, but we wanted to discuss it a little bit further today, especially with what's going on in the economy and with what might happen with the real estate market. We really believe that it is a, a good opportunity for everybody. So Mike, um, the first question I want to ask you before we get into the nuts and bolts is how did you, like number one, come across tax deeds specifically as far as an investment route and what got you really interested in them? Yeah, well, I, I had heard about them for years. And, and as you know, I've been investing for a long, long time. I've been doing this for 31 years and probably never even came across my, you know, it never even kind of was on my radar till, you know, maybe 12, 13 years ago. And I kept hearing about it and I didn't know if it was true. It sounded almost too good to be true, to be honest with you, because people were telling me, yeah, people don't pay their property taxes. And these homes go up for auction and the opening bid is like a couple of grand. I go, no way. And because all these years I've been like saving up money to uh, purchase properties and going, if, if that is the case, and if I can figure out how to do that, you know, I could build my portfolio a whole lot quicker. And so, so that was kind of, uh, you know, it was something that kind of kept coming up in conversation. Nobody seemed to really know how to do it. Uh, a lot of people were talking about it. And so I started to do some research and I pretty much read every book on the topic I could find. I took a couple of courses and the more that I studied, uh, the more confused I got because there was so much conflicting opera, you know, conflicting information. And so eventually I just had to kind of make myself the guinea pig and just test some stuff and see what worked and what didn't work. And, and that's kind of how I figured it out. But uh, it was, it's one of those things that, believe it or not, has been around for hundreds of years since, uh, since they've had property taxes, which is like 200 and something years ago. For as long as they've had property taxes, they've always had a way to, to deal with delinquent taxpayers. And so even though this has been around for a long, long time, not a lot of people know about it. And that's just because there's not a lot of people that would benefit from teaching you. Like realtors uh, usually don't know very much about it, but even if they did, they're never gonna say, oh, don't buy your home from me off the MLS, buy something at the auction, you'll save a bunch of money because they can't monetize it. And banks, banks are the, some of the biggest investors in, in tax deeds and tax liens. And they, you know, they wanna take your money on deposit and they wanna go invest, so they're not gonna teach you. So there's not a whole lot of people that benefit from showing you how to do it. So, but, uh, but yeah, it's something that's been around a long time, something that hasn't been on my radar all that long, relatively speaking, but I'm glad that I uh, took the time to figure it out. So what was that like the first time that you actually decided to invest? You said you've known about it for about 12 years now. W- was it a long process after the courses and the books or was it, okay, I've had enough. I'm going to jump into it. What was that first experience like? Yeah, well, it, it, it was definitely uh, making myself a guinea pig and, and taking <laughs> some risks because for, for example, a lot of people that want to sell you a course, they're going to tell you, oh, you can do this from the comfort and safety of your own home. And yeah, you can, if you don't mind losing money, you can do anything you want from the comfort and safety of your own home. Uh, but one of the things they would teach you, for example, is that, oh, you don't need to go see the property. Just go online and look at Google Maps or Google Earth or whatever. Uh, go, go look at it online. And as you and I both know, because you've been on the, the training, uh, sometimes you drive by these homes that look really good in pictures and you get there and uh, either it doesn't look anything like the picture or there's a bunch of smoldering ashes where the home used to be. And you know, one of the, one of the, uh, you know, the benefit to buying the auction is you get homes really, really cheap. The downside of the auction is what you see is what you get. So whatever you end up with after the bidding stops, if you're the high bidder, whatever you just won, you've got no recourse. You can't go back and say, I want my money back. And so uh, I didn't know that. I, I, you know, like I said, I, I listened to some of the uh, gurus that, that were saying that, you know, and it's true, you don't, you don't have to go see the property for yourself, but you have to have boots on the ground. You have to have somebody there to do that for you. And that's what I've done for myself and for my students. I built up a team on the ground uh, so we don't have to physically be in Houston, Texas, where my favorite auction is, uh, to participate. We have other people who go be our eyes and ears 
and you know, videotape the property, videotape the streetscape. Uh, but there were a lot of little things like that that uh, you know made it very, very dangerous. And and uh, there's actually a um, a story not too long ago about somebody in in Fort Lauderdale who thought they had bought this really nice villa, and it was worth. I'm, I'm just going from memory here, two hundred something thousand uh, dollars, and they bit. They ended up getting it for nine thousand dollars. They thought they got this really amazing deal until they found out they actually got a little strip of land about 100 feet long by one foot wide that separated two villas. And so there's a lot of things that you need to know before you go bid or you can totally you know, lose your shirt. Luckily, I met a few people at the auction pretty early on that are now on my team, by the way, but I met some people that had been going to the auction for a long, long time. And I, I kind of hired them and, and uh, learned from them. So I didn't, luckily, I didn't have to make a whole lot of expensive mistakes. Uh, but I was prepared to because I knew that even if I lost on my first couple, it would lead to the strategy where I'd be able to make the money back and then some on the future deals. And so, uh, but that's how I started. Awesome. Now, I know you mentioned you have a team now. Uh, for the people who, you know, didn't come into one of your trainings or might be new to this, if they are considering it, what are some, you don't have to give all obviously, but what are some of the due diligence checks that you made specifically when you were looking at a home and when did you start prior to the auction date? Yeah, well, basically, the, uh, we get the list of all the homes that are going up for auction, usually almost a month in advance. So we get it way in advance. Now, doing your homework at the beginning of the month, when you first get that list, is kind of a waste of time. And the, the reason I say that is that, obviously, these people, their homes aren't, one, they're not one day late with their taxes. They're usually three or four years behind on their taxes. And they get a notice, you know, they've been getting notices for all that time saying, hey, if you don't pay up your arrears, your home's going to end up on the auction block. And so they're not really taking it seriously because they've been getting these notices for years and years and years. And then suddenly they get something in the mail that says, hey, the first Tuesday of next month, your home's going on the auction block. And all of a sudden, these people who before were too proud to ask for help from their friends and relatives, uh, they're on a mission to get that money to, to bail their house out. And so some of these homes, even though they're on the list, by the end of the month, these people are going to find the money to uh, you know, get, take their home off the list. So there'll be cancellations. So if you do your homework too early, uh, you're basically, uh, a lot of that will be a waste of your time. So I usually do my homework. Uh, if the auction's on the Tuesday, first Tuesday of the month. Mm -hmm. I'll start the Friday before. And I'll look at what's still left on the list. And some of the, some of the things you wanna look at, one, as I mentioned, uh, you definitely have to have somebody drive by the property, make sure it looks uh, like the one in the pictures and that it's still standing. Uh, you need to do some uh, title searches because normally, all the mortgages get wiped out because the mortgage companies are notified. Uh, you know, they get a notice from the county uh, saying that, hey, this home's going up for auction. If you want to bail it out, you're welcome to pay off the arrears and you can save it and protect your mortgage. Uh, but there's certain steps that you have to do to make sure that these people are notified. If they weren't notified, they could come back after you in the property and their mortgage will get reinstated on there. So all of a sudden this smoking deal that you thought you got uh, now has a, uh, you know, might have a really big mortgage attached to it. So there's a lot of due diligence steps uh, that most people don't even know uh, to do that lead them into, you know, making big mistakes at these auctions. And so you got to be really careful to know exactly what, what those steps are, uh, how you can protect yourself. And if you do all that, uh, when you do get a property, it will be a good deal instead of a, uh, a liability for you. Now, in your experience, um, how many uh, different maybe cities and states have you done it in and how much will the rules and laws vary state to state? Is it a lot? Is only, only a little bit? What's been your experience? Yeah, the laws can vary quite a bit. So um, to answer your question, I actually have only done it in two places and they're both in Texas. I did uh, Houston and San Antonio and then I found there's a lot more uh, supply, a lot bigger uh, supply of properties at the Houston auction. So I made that kind of my, uh, you know, my favorite auction to go to, uh, but from state to state, it varies a lot. And so there's two different things. Some states are what are called lean states. And in a lean state, L-I-E-N, by the way, a lean state, you're not actually buying a piece of property. You're buying, usually you're getting what's called a TLC, tax lien certificate. Mm -hmm. That's what that means. Uh, let's say you don't pay your, your taxes, Brian, and uh, you get a notice from the, the county saying, hey, on July 1st, your taxes are due. It's a thousand bucks. If you don't pay your taxes, we're assessing a 20% penalty. July 1st comes and goes, you don't make that payment. And now they, they send you something in the mail saying, okay, you didn't pay. So now instead of a thousand, you owe us 1200 bucks. Now, what you don't know is that they are going and looking for an investor and they're saying to the investor, hey, if you give us a thousand dollars that Brian owes, 
When Brian pays us, we'll send you the 1200. So that's how a lien works. Now tax deed is uh, the opposite of that. You're actually bidding on a property. You're not bidding on covering the arrears. You're actually buying a property. And so uh, there's lien states, there's deed states, and then there's hybrid states. And Texas is one of those. And it's kind of, if, if liens and deeds had a baby, uh, that's what you've got when you have a, a hybrid state. And, and what I mean by that is in Texas, when you buy a property at the auction, uh, there's a six month uh, period that the previous owner can come back and purchase that property back from you. Now, if they want to buy it back from you, they've got to give you a 25% premium. So if you pay 10,000 for the home, they've got to give you 12,500. Plus they have to pay you for any eligible expenses, meaning if you have to fix the roof, and that was five grand, they've got to give you five grand plus another 25%. If you have to change the carpets to make it livable so you can rent it to somebody, they have to give you a 25% premium. Mm -hmm. So one of two things is going to happen. Either they're going to come back and, and give you 25% more than what your expenses were to get that uh, property, or you're going to end up with that property. And if you did your homework right, you're going to get that free and clear, no other mortgages, no other, uh, mm -hmm. nothing else owing on it. And those are really the only two outcomes if you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, uh, there's a lot of other outcomes that unfortunately happen. And quite often we see people get stuck with these properties that, like I said, they have mortgages attached to them or uh, you have an empty lot where you thought you were getting a home. Uh, there's all kinds of different possibilities. And this, you really need to do your homework. But if you go to different uh, locations, uh, it will vary in terms of, you know, whether it's a lean state, deed state, hybrid state, first of all. And then some of them have auctions every month, some have auctions once a year and everything in between. So there's lots of different things that you need to know before you just randomly show up at an auction somewhere. But I recommend going to where the, you know, the returns are best. And to me, Texas has the best returns because I really like that 25% premium. If I can get 25% of my money every six months, yeah. that's amazing. And, and as a matter of fact, even if the homeowner comes back three days later, they still have to give you 25%. Yeah. So uh, when you can get that kind of return, awesome. And you make even more money though when they don't come back and buy it from you because uh, as you know, cause I know you got some really smoking deals. Uh, if you can get a home that's worth a lot more than what you paid for it, you're kind of hoping, oh, I don't, I don't want to make the 20, you get pretty spoiled. I don't want to make the 25%. Mm -hmm. I want to get the bigger paycheck. Right. And so, uh, but every, every place will vary how they, how they do it, where they do it. Uh, and uh, you know, some of them are only once a year. So if you go to that one auction, you get nothing. But now you've got a whole year where you've got no real estate deals to do. So you want to have a backup strategy or you want to go somewhere where they have frequent auctions. And that's why, that's why I love Houston. Yeah. Houston's great. I mean, that's only been my experience, but um, for the people that don't know, Mike, uh, two more questions. Number one, do we have to show up with cash in hand to purchase? And number two, is there any, you know, limitation or stipulation saying, Hey, if I buy this property, I can't just turn around and fix and flip it. For a huge profit, right? Is there any laws or anything preventing people from doing that? Or can they come in, you know, with cash or without cash and just turn around and resell it for market value? Yeah. So to answer your first question, uh, you have to have one of two things. And this, I'm speaking specifically for Houston right now. So mm -hmm. like I said, it can vary from auction to auction, but in terms of Houston, you have two choices. You have to have either cash or uh, you have to have bank drafts, one or the other. And so uh, you have to pay for it right then and there. If you're the high bidder, you can't say, oh, I'm just going to go to my bank and get some money. I'll be back in 10 minutes. Uh, you can't even say I'm going to my car. You have to have it physically. Like you need to pay right away. You're the high bidder. If you don't pay for it right away, one, they're going to ban you from the auction. And two, they're going to re-auction it, re-auction that property. And you're, you're going to miss out. So you actually physically have to have cash or cashier's checks on you. Those are the only two things accepted. In other, in other counties, they have different rules. And sometimes you have a, a certain amount of time to come up with the money or maybe to finance it. That's not the case in, in Texas, which is another reason why I like it because for somebody like me, I know that, uh, you know, people that don't have the cash physically that have to go raise it. Uh, they're not, I'm not competing against them. I'm only competing against other cash buyers. So there's less competition. Uh, the second thing, uh, are there laws preventing you from flipping it the day after? Uh, not at all. You can actually flip it the day after. Now, remember, because the uh, previous owner has a six month redemption period, it's called redemption period to come back and buy that property off you, you would need to disclose that to somebody else. Now, 99% of the time, they don't come back. If they lost their home, you know, they're not going to come back a month later with all the money plus 25% very often. So you want to disclose to somebody that, hey, you know, this is what's going on. I picked it up at an auction. Here's 
here's what could possibly happen. And there's different ways my team knows how to deal with it, to write up the offer in such a way that you're not going to get yourself in trouble. Mm -hmm. They do come back. Uh, there's a way to reverse it and they get their money back. Uh, I don't deal with that. My team deals with all that. Right. Uh, the other thing is when you go to these auctions, you're not getting, uh, you know, you're, you're, it's very, you can't get immediately uh, title insurance because the title companies don't really understand how these auctions work. And so there's different ways to deal with that. Uh, there's also different ways to, like I said, to um, get the, when you buy this property, you have all the rights of a homeowner, except for the previous owner retains one right. And that's called the right of redemption. So they can't live in the property. They, they can't, uh, they have no rights to the property other than, other than coming back with 25% more than what you paid and buying it from you. But there's ways to approach the previous homeowner and say, listen, if you're willing to waive that right, of redemption, and I'll give you 500 bucks just to sign this piece of paper. And of course, somebody just lost their home who's got no money, 500 bucks is a lot of money to them. And if they weren't planning on buying it or, or buying it back off you anyways, they're usually pretty happy to sign that paper. So there's different ways to play with that. And that's why you really wanna learn the ins and outs because it gives you a lot more options. Most people think that if they go to that auction, they get a property, uh, they're not gonna be able to sell it. There's a number of different ways that you can, uh, but you have to be a little bit creative and strategic with how you do that. Uh, otherwise, you get yourself in really big trouble. If you go sell it to somebody else, they move in, the previous owner comes back and wants their property back, uh, you're probably going to get yourself in a lawsuit. So you have to be really careful how you do that. Right. Well, I, I appreciate this, Mike. This is a lot of good information. You know, I did a video a while back. I know a lot of people reached out to you after it, uh, asking for information about the tax deed auction. So I knew I had to do this one and hear it from you directly because obviously you explain it better than I do and have a lot more experience. But can you talk a little bit as we're wrapping up the video? Can you talk a little bit more about uh, this next kind of event that you're doing, the three-day event? Um, and is it in November? Yeah, it's November 20th to 22nd. Mm -hmm. And I'll be talking about a whole bunch of things. And, and so remember I said that, you know, a month before the list comes out and I don't start research till the Friday before the auction. It's actually not fully true because that when that list comes out, that's a list of people in trouble. There's a list of people who are going to lose their homes in a month. And so there's the auction, but I'm also, I also like to teach people, well, how do you deal with it before it goes to auction? Because we, those are what are called pre foreclosures. These people are in the process of losing their home. They still at this point have the right to resell it. They can, they can, they can do, a, they have a lot of different options at that point. And so one of the things I teach is how do you go and approach these homeowners before they lose their home? And that's called a pre foreclosure. How do you deal with that? help them maybe avoid the foreclosure and at the same time monetize it for yourself. There's a lot less competition when you get to these people before the auction. At the auction, there's a bunch of people obviously wanting to get that property. And as you know, you can still get great deals at the auction, but what if you approach that even before? So I'll be teaching pre-foreclosure. I'll be teaching foreclosures. I'll be talking a little bit about tax liens and deeds. Uh, I'll be talking about something called overages at these auctions when uh, somebody, uh, let's say the opening bid is five grand on a property and it sells for 50, uh, 50,000. The first 5,000 that belongs to the county, that's a back taxes. The additional 45,000, that's what's called an overage or sometimes called surplus funds, depending on what part of the country. And that money actually belongs to the previous homeowner. And most previous homeowners have no clue that they're owed this cash. And so a really cool strategy that requires you know, very little money, by the way, if, if uh, I know some people are watching this thinking, oh, I wish I could participate, but I don't have very much money. This is an awesome strategy. You go, tra you go find, track down that homeowner, let them know, hey, I know somebody owes you $45,000. If you're willing to give me 30% or 40% or 50, whatever you negotiate with them, I'm willing to do all the work to get you that money. And it, it costs you nothing unless I'm successful. And you have to remember, these people just lost their home and they've got no cash. So imagine you go to them and say, listen, I know somebody owes you 45 grand. Uh, their ears are going to perk up. So we're going to teach you how do you deal with that? Uh, I'm going to be teaching things such as wholesaling. Uh, wholesaling is where uh, you find a property. And if you don't have the cash to do it yourself, you basically put it under contract. Uh, and then you find a, another buyer and you assign the contract to them. You let them go do the deal. But I know people that have assigned contracts and made, you know, 10, 15, $20,000. And the best part about wholesaling, once again, requires no money. You're not buying the house. Right. You're just putting it under contract, finding somebody else. And by the way, if you're thinking, oh, who am I going to sell that to? Well, I know one person, I know two people on this call right now that would be very interested oh. if you found a really good deal and put it under contract. Among many others, uh, I'm going to be teaching how you do subject two. So basically teaching my top strategies for right now during you know, these COVID times and what's coming down the pipeline uh, for people that want to either get into real estate that haven't done it before 
or for people that maybe have tried it, uh, but they want to find out, you know, how uh, from somebody who's been doing it 31 years, the best practices, the best ways to do this, best ways to monetize it. And I know that because it's COVID times, there's a lot of people not working right now and they're looking to transition. And that's why I'm, normally, as you know, I'm a full-time uh, nomad and world traveler. And right now I'm hunkered down and not able to do that. So I've been using the time productively to teach as many people as I can. And so November 20th to 22nd is going to be my last training for the year 2020. And that's $97 because I know a lot of people can't afford, uh, you know, thousands of dollars for trainings right now. So for anybody who's interested, I know, I know you have a, a link that you can post and uh, uh, it's $97 for all three days. And uh, we're going to go uh, th three full days of, of just content and no, no fluff. It's all just content on my favorite strategies and I'm bringing in some of my uh, uh, very successful uh, friends that are doing all kinds of different strategies. They'll be teaching you too. And I'm trying to convince somebody named Ryan Casella to come speak on that show too. So you just never know who might show up. Oh yeah. Well, I appreciate that, Mike. We'll definitely have to talk about that because I'm totally down. It just, it always conflicts, right? I think I'm going to be know, we the wrong 20th, 20th to the 22nd, you said? Exactly. It's all online. Of course, it's all on Zoom. So you can watch it from anywhere on the planet. Might be in Miami then, but uh, I'll check my schedule. I'll let you know if I can, I'll definitely jump on. So Sounds Mike, great, buddy. appreciate you coming on again for everybody. I'll put that link in the description. I'll put all his info in the description. I'll also pin it, pin comment. Um, anything else you want to offer them or anything else you want to discuss before we wrap this up, Mike? Yeah, well, I can also offer them. I have a free ebook on some of my top strategies as well that I'm happy to, to uh, share with your audience cool. and just want to leave, you know, final comment that, uh, you know, during these, during these downtimes, like I said, normally I'm traveling and, and normally I don't have time to do very many trainings. I usually do my, you know, my tax D training once or twice a year and that's it. And this year I've committed to helping as many people as I can since I can't travel full time. And so, you know, really I recommend that people, uh, you know, I know a lot of people are feeling down and they're depressed and there's a lot of people struggling right now. Instead, be optimistic. There's so much opportunity coming down the pipeline if only you, you take the time to educate yourself on where that is. And there's gonna be so many, uh, just so many um, new, new ways to, to make money and there's a, you know, one of the things I love to teach people is that I don't like the term real estate investor. I like the term problem solver. And the more problems we know how to solve, the more people we can help and the more money we can make. And so really my three days is all about how do you be a really good problem solver? And what are the things, you know, I've been through enough of these cycles. I mean, I was, I made a lot of money in 2007, 2008 when a bunch of people were losing their shirts, uh, you know, after 9-11. Uh, you know, usually when, when we're in times of turbulence, that's where the most money is. And that's where you have the biggest transfer of wealth. And that money trickles down. And this is your chance to get a piece of that if you know what to look for. And so that's what those three days are all about. So take the time, whether it be with me or somebody else, but use this time productively to educate yourself, reinvent yourself. And instead of being all, uh, you know, and it's, I, I know it's very hard because I know there's obviously we've got a pandemic going around. But if you see this world through, uh, you know, in an optimistic sort of way, and instead of being uh, you know, down and just down in the dumps and not doing anything, if you take the time to uh, reinvent yourself, uh, you can come out of this way, way, way stronger than when you came in. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you, Mike. We'll uh, catch you on the next episode. Thanks so much, Brian. Great to see you, buddy.